behind closed doors, but not behind bars. A woman sentenced today for keeping an illegal immigrant in her palatial Rexford home. Federal prosecutors claimed that the immigrant was being kept against her will, and Matt Markham was the only local TV reporter to cover this trial gavel to gavel. He's in the newsroom tonight with our top story. Matt? It was Annie George was found guilty on the lesser count of the two she faced at trial in March. Prosecutors claim George forced an Indian immigrant named Balsama Matai to work for her and live in a closet. George is now staying put, five years probation, eight months house arrest, but it's also a home she may ultimately have to give up. No fines in this case. I mean, is this an end that satisfies everybody? Uh, well, I mean, certainly we're happy she's not incarcerated, going to jail, uh, but... You know, where she has proclaimed her innocence. Who had been a colorful dresser in the courtroom, Annie George walked out wearing black on the day of her sentencing. The defendant said she did not keep Valsama Matai against her will, but the jury said keeping her as an illegal alien was enough. She didn't bring this woman to her house. She didn't make any arrangements with this woman, and and unfortunately. Uh, her, you know, her husband wasn't here to deal with this, and the government decided that she was the one that was going to have to deal with it. George's husband died in a plane crash. She testified her financial house fell apart thereafter while living at seemingly the nicest house around, the Lenrock Mansion. Judge Gary Sharp ordered that that house should be turned over to the federal government. During sentencing, Sharp also expressed an aggravation with George's testimony. Quote, you took that stand, you swore to tell the truth, and you lied through your eye teeth, the judge said. The comment refers back to a phone call played for the jury where George is heard talking to Matai's son, saying that Matai would get in trouble if anyone found out she was living with the Georges. George denied that voice was hers. There was nothing in the trial. There was no voice analysis, no attempt by the government to uh, match her voice up to it. Uh, she, was, she was testifying in English, and the tape was in uh, a foreign language. Valsama Matai, by the way, was granted a special visa to testify in this trial, and the government gave her no promise of citizenship because of it. George is back in Rexford tonight, but if the government wants to seize that house, where will she go? Talk about that at 6 o'clock, Liz. Can you talk for a minute about the reaction from the prosecution? Matt? Yeah, they, uh, they didn't want to go on camera, but Assistant U.S. Attorney Rick Bellis told me today simply that he believed this was a just sentence. He made the case that Annie George did nothing to help Matai gain citizenship while they were living together. As she violated, Matai violated the conditions of that visa when the Georges took her away and eventually uh, to the capital region. They said it was a coercive process, the prosecution did, and their initial tip that she was in Rexford came in from a human trafficking hotline.